Good morning, it's Debbie Gilbert here from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the founder of the Best Business Women Awards. Well, today we're going all the way up to Birmingham, and I'm interviewing the lovely Julie Hetherington, who is a Tiny Talk franchisee. Now, she has a very interesting story because she morphed from being a chartered accountant into running baby signing classes. So we're going to find out a bit more about Julie, about the Lifetime Achievement Award that she won this year at the Club Hub UK Awards, and a bit about what it's like to be a franchisee. So welcome, Julie. Thank you, Debbie. Lovely to be here. Oh, and and you are a podcast virgin today, I believe. I am, yes. Popping the cherry today, definitely. (laughs) So Julie's never been on a podcast, so we're the first one. So that's quite exciting. So Julie, let's start off by talking about your journey. So you went from a life of, you know, dare I say, under probably loads of spreadsheets and dealing with lots of figures and numbers to running baby signing classes. So how did that come about? But, you know, there's not actually that much difference, to be fair. There's transferable <laughs> skills. I'm still under a, a bed of spreadsheets and numbers. Um, yeah, so I worked as a chartered accountant in the city centre for about 10 years um, out of university, um, putting my love of business and maths together. Um, and I'd always wanted to be a teacher. And I had a year's maternity leave with my daughter, who's now 16. Um, and I did tiny talk classes. There were there were very few classes out there uh, when I started. A lot of them were sort of council funded, um, stay and play type groups. So this was really the only kind of big class that was out there. Um, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I love the fact that I got to spend time with my child. I love the fact that it was using my brain as well because I was learning some BSL signs. Um, and I met a wonderful community of ladies uh, and we did lots of firsts together, like first weaning in class. We all had a little biscuit together. And that's okay. and I, I just loved it. And um, before I was due to go back to work, which I really didn't want to do because I knew the hours were very long and I'd got a child to look after now. My husband did a very similar job. So he would have the long hours as well. And I knew I would be the one when you get the phone call from nursery, it would be me who'd have to go. Um, and somebody in the class actually asked the teacher, you know, what, what's this all about? What do you have to do to do this? Could I do this? Um, and I shamelessly earwigged and thought, do you know, I could do this. Um, and I suggested it to my husband and my family and they all thought I'd gone a bit mad. Maybe it was hormones, you know, and just terrified of going back to work. And so I knew I couldn't do it then. Um, but I went back to work for about six months. And I think the turning point for me was one of my days off with my daughter. I was going to Sainsbury's to buy a cake and, and a drink. And we were going to meet up with some friends in a park. And I didn't leave the Sainsbury's car park for about four hours because my phone just kept going from work. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you help me? And I just thought... I can't, this is rubbish. No. So I picked up the phone to Tiny Talk and said, tell me all about it. And then I'm still here now. 14 years. I know. (laughs) So for anyone listening, let's deep a bit dive, deep, gosh, deep, a bit deeper into, dig a bit deeper. That's what I wanted to say. Dig a bit deeper into um, what this actually is this signing with babies and how that benefits the children because I'm really interested to understand a bit more about that no absolutely and to be honest before I started doing the classes I think if someone told me this was even possible I'd have gone no what are you talking about no 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 and indeed when I started going to the classes and told my husband what I was doing uh, you know as a mom he just thought it was a load of twaddle And I was really just going for coffee every week. And this was like my cover story. Um, But basically babies, you know, don't, they're not able to speak until they're probably anything, you know, 16, 18 months, two and beyond. And particularly post-COVID, children seem to be taking longer to speak. But before then, they find control of their hands. And so it's using something that they can do you know, to actually do something they can't do. So it's early communication with you. Uh, And we start off with very, very basic signs. Uh, We teach BSL uh, individual signs. So it's things that they really want. So milk, you know, food, um, perhaps pet signs, because they're exposed to pets and animals quite early on. You know, we we all dress our children in a Peter Rabbit onesie or that sort of thing. Um, And it's, they're unable to do that then. And it's fantastic. So my daughter did her first sign at about seven months old. And it was a milk sign. And I've got to be honest, as a parent then, sleep deprived, baby brain, uh, I wasn't doing it as regularly with her as I should have been. Uh, the more you put in and do it with them, the more they, they, you know, they'll pick it up quicker. Um, but at seven months, she did her milk sign quite spectacularly to her dad. 
you know, who, who'd been sort of poo-pooing all the way along. Uh, we were in a restaurant, dessert was about to come, and this little arm shot out of the car seat and started doing this. And uh -huh. my husband was like, what, what's that? And I'm like, that's signing. And he was like, wow. And so that was lovely. Um, and it's just amazing to see how they can interact with you quite quick. Uh, and to see the parents' phases as well, particularly if they choose to do a signing class when everyone watches it. It's just, it's just <laughs> not. Yeah, because there is such a lot going on in a baby's brain, you know, that perhaps parents and adults don't really realise. So it's, it's a way of getting out and giving you a window into their soul and their thinking. So how many classes a week do you run? Um, I do eight at the moment. I think I've done 10, 10, 11, I think was the maximum I've done any one time. And how um, long is each, is each class? Um, so it's an hour. Uh, it's about half an hour, 35 minutes of dedicated class time. And then the second sort of half an hour is social time. And this was a real USP for me when I went as a parent, because uh, some of the classes you go to, you're in and you're out. And unless you were a gregarious parent, Fortunately, I am. Uh, they would just go and talk to anybody outside. Uh, some people then don't get the social interaction that they need. Um, and this is brilliant because we make them a cup of tea or a squash. We give them, an, I call a nice biscuit. Um, and they get to have a chat. Their children get to play and they get to speak as well. And when I first started the classes, sort of mental health and postnatal depression and all that sort of stuff wasn't very high on the agenda where it's, it's all over the place now. So I had people come into my class who I had no idea were suffering from all these things. Mm -hmm. And it was only when they left and perhaps gave me a thank you gift and a card and had me in floods of tears because they're going, you don't realise what a difference this has made. It's, it's got me out of bed every week. It's the one thing I've looked forward to. Um, so that aspect is really, really important as well. Yeah, definitely. Lovely for the parents, lovely for the children. Yeah. So um, let's talk a bit more about Tiny Talk as a business. So you joined the company 14 and a half years ago as a yeah. franchisee. Mm -hmm. So let's play devil's advocate here. You know, why did you buy a franchise instead of just setting a business up yourself? Well, obviously, coming from an accountancy background, I've been into lots and lots of businesses. I'd seen them doing really well. I'd seen them not doing so well. Uh, I also like Dragon's Den <laughs> and those kind of programs. And you can see people come on and start in. And I know that when you're starting a business, you know, you've got to give it probably five years to get off the ground. You know, if you are going to be creating a product or a brand or anything like that, you, you've got to do that. You've got to create it. You've got to test it. Uh, so buying into a franchise, you're buying into something that already exists, that's got a proven track record that, you know, already works for people around the country. Um, and then, you know, you're investing less money into it because you're not having to set it all up. You're you're investing into that franchise, but you've not got all the startup mm -hmm. costs and the risks and everything as well. So it's a safer bet to do. And actually, whilst you are running your business as a sole trader by yourself, you've got the support of a head office behind you. So if you are struggling with anything, there's training, there's support, there's mentorship uh, through them as well. And you've got this whole team. So at any one time, Tiny Talks usually got 80 to 100 franchises in the country. I and mean, when we have had more and, you know, they're looking to grow again. Um, so there's always somebody, even at three o'clock in the morning, if you wake up and think, I need to ask this question. We've got a lovely sort of Facebook network going on. You could put a question and I guarantee you somebody would be there, you know, to yeah. answer your question. And how long has the franchise been going? Um, so my franchise has been going 14 and a half years. Um, Tiny Talk itself has been going for 22 years. Um, yeah, so a really, really long time. Yeah. So if somebody's sort of thinking about buying a franchise, uh, what sort of things should they be looking at with a company you know what's the due diligence they should be doing because it's like anything there are good franchises and bad ones aren't there absolutely absolutely I think first of all you need to find something that you're going to love doing so don't just think oh, oh, oh fancy being a franchisee let's go and find something you need to be invested in what you're doing so I really wanted to do this which is great um I'm fortunate where I am now that I do a lot of work for head office and I actually do the information days for new teachers coming on board and we have people I guess like me who come on and they really want to do it and they're asking all the right questions we have people who come on we have because they just fancied owning a franchise because they thought signing would slot in nicely with something else that they do. Um, but they've got a little one and they just want to do something with little ones. And they come on and they start to listen and realise, actually, no, this isn't what I want to do. And I think from a franchise basis, you need to be, I say, sure, it's something you want to do. You need to have a look at the money that's coming in, because obviously the money off a franchise is completely different to what you would have been earning in another job. But also you need to consider what you're earning money for. So... Actually, when I looked at it, 
I seemingly on paper had a wonderfully lovely paycheck at the end of the month to be my accountant. But when you scrubbed off paying for my child to go to nursery five days a week, when you scrubbed off the costs of petrol and parking in the city centre, you know, silly things like having to buy a suit and getting it dry cleaned all the time because you come home and they'd puked on your shoulder and daft things, buying lunch because you didn't have time to make it. It just racked up. And when you took all that off, the bit that I was left with at the end was not dissimilar to what I can earn doing this. And I don't do as many hours in a week and I'm at home. And, you know, and as I've got bigger, I can do assemblies and school trips and things as well. So you have to make sure it's right for you in terms of what's coming in, but also what works for you in your home life as well. Mm. And when people are looking at the support that they get from their franchisor, you know, what should people be looking at as a benchmark? What, what should people be getting? Um, it, as opposed to sort of running the business themselves, they're buying a franchise. What What is it that they should be receiving from their franchise or? Well, they should be getting initial training to make sure they can run that business and they know what they're doing as well. Um, certainly what we do is we have a, a mentorship program. So you're assigned to somebody when you join um, and you are monitored uh, for that initial period by them. You should have ongoing monitoring from your head office to make sure that you're doing okay and you're not floundering. Uh, mm -hmm. We have... Um, ongoing training so we have annual where we all get together and there's training on that day that's coming up in a few weeks time uh, which is our annual conference we have part year training as well where we get together with our regional teams and we do training together and, and sharing ideas and things um, and also there's just if you ever need any help with anything it's there for you so for example um, when covid struck you know, we all had to get on board and get online. So between all of us, head office put out lots and lots of information there that enabled every teacher to be able to run their business online should they need to. So you shouldn't pay your money, be given whatever you're given and be left flounder. You know, there should be ongoing support. So I'm getting a real sense of community there as well. So mm -hmm. head support and community is the, is the biggest sort of bonuses, really. Plus it's, it's a brilliant really system. Is. Yeah, which is great. Hmm. so let's talk about awards because it is the business award show uh, so you got a coveted award this year I always think lifetime achievements are a really special award to receive hmm. and that was from Club Hub UK now the lovely Tessa has won some of the best business women awards and you know I've spoken at her events and she's a real champion for the children's activity sector and she set up these awards a few years ago so what made you enter that and what was your thought process behind it? No, absolutely. I'd, I've won some awards in the past, um, when I, sort of in the early days of when I started, and I've won quite a lot of internal awards at our conferences and things. Oh. And, and our, so I've got loads, but um, I don't know if you can see this one. If club awards are beautiful. They are really tactile, wooden. And um, actually, and I didn't realise this until I was presenting with the day, they are designed for us as a children activity sector to take to classes with us. Mm. so that the children can hold them yes. um, which is brilliant for marketing obviously um, <laughs> but that was really lovely I never thought about that before because all the ones that I've got so far are actually uh, glass yes. uh, but you know so I've got them I need to put them all out somewhere but I haven't been able to take them so much so that the uh, boss of a tiny talk this year is now going to go and get us ones like this so that, so that we can take them around so I've took that away and took that back um, but it was really lovely I joined Club Hub uh, quite early on actually I just was drawn to the website and so I've been a member for a long time and um, I actually realized that the lovely Emma Hewitt who actually I know you've spoke to as well um, is actually on my school run and I hadn't <laughs> put two and two together so I'd got talking to her as well and she was saying you know you ought to come to this event because it's quite local which is in Birmingham every year and um, and you know why don't you go for an award and I was like I don't know what I, it sounds ridiculous but I don't know what I've got that I can say that I do or I've done that would win me an award and I think I was really the, the, you know the monkeys on my back were saying no no don't go for it what are you going to say and Emma said you really should so I started to look at them and I just felt like I hadn't done enough to necessarily fit in some of the other categories which I am going to go for this year but I've been doing it for so long I'm going to go for lifetime achievements and um, and actually it was fantastic to, to do I was a, a, a deadline chaser I really was because I kept saying no and shall I and oh mm. but um I sat down it was really cathartic because mm -hmm. and particularly after listening to you because you were presenting at the Club Hood Awards this year and thinking about what I did and it was ticking a lot of things in my head it was about self-review and realizing that actually that's a long time and I have actually done a lot of stuff and then I started to pull together some figures which 
I suddenly realised I'd been really good and kept, I kept all these records and stuff and what was I going to use? What I can use them for this? And realised the sheer amount of people that had come through my classes and the sheer amount of people that had come back to classes with baby number two and three and even four um, and how much of a difference I had made and some of the charitable stuff I had done. And then I started typing and I tried to upload it to the club pub portal and it said, it's far too long. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, so I started cutting that. So actually I realised how much I had got and how much I had done. Yeah. Um, I didn't think that I was going to win it by any stretch of the imagination, but that process in itself has started me off now on a bit of a bug to try and start winning more awards and things as well. So, And it really was. Uh, I was almost in tears when I found out that I won because it was just, just brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, and there were a lot of incredible businesses in that category. And I think, you know, clearly whatever you put in your entry made you stand head and shoulders above everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think some of the things you've just sort of commented on, which is like, client coming back you know client retention yeah. um, means that you're doing a great job because yeah. you know if people come back to you with their second or third or fourth child who has four children you got me no mad. I know I know <laughs> <laughs> she makes it look a breeze I can tell you that now <laughs> <laughs> don't they they always do women who've got large families always make it look so easy mm. but I stopped at two and that me was too. <laughs> um, so yeah the people that are coming back and probably have shared your business with lots of other women as well and told them about you yeah. and, and so what sort of things have you done for charity over the years um i have done a lot of i say in a, in a charitable sense when uh, covid was on uh, we've got a lovely uh, food bank by us called b30 the food bank um, and i could see the pleas coming out for different things so as we were online with the classes uh, i ran a week's worth of classes which my regulars could come to, um, but anybody else could come to as well. And I donated the fees from those classes oh, to wow. the food bank. Um, I think it was about 100, 100 to 150 pounds, which we donated for them to buy the food as well. Uh, we've also done quite a lot of raising as Tiny Talk uh, for the Rainbow Trust uh, for children with life limiting um, illnesses. And we've done various things. So we've dressed up all in rainbow gear, we've done special classes, um, so lots of different things like that. Um, and then not for a money raising sense, but I have done a lot of free uh, classes and sessions for the local libraries, for the local same play groups um, as well. So lots of things out there. Um, and some, for some of the local festivals like Coco Mad um, and things that we've got around here too. Do you know, I can't go to Sainsbury's any weekend without seeing somebody that I know. <laughs> it's quite funny. And if it's a little child, they usually look at me very bemused because I'm not wearing purple. Uh, and then I've got obviously children now who are, who are in their teens. So the parents will come and stop to me and they're like, do you know, do you remember Julie? And they're like, no. no. And then like, that's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> you know, but some of them are like, but you should do. You should do. It's a very important part of your bringing up. But you're like, you know, it's, it's OK. It's fine. So have you formed um, sort of a lot of local community links that help to feed your business as well? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the venues on that I mean are community centres and churches um, and, and a social club, uh, which is great because <laughs> they're really lovely uh, as well because they're very community focused. Um, but yeah, they've, they'll all put information out for me on socials and put posters up as well, but they'll all tell people. So I, on my app, you know, forms to join my classes, I'll say, where do you hear about me? And more often than not, it is word of mouth that is the top reason why. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I've got people now who say children are still in their teens, but I'll, their name will be on a form saying, you know, I work with Louise. Louise came to your classes eight years ago and she's told me I have to do it. Uh, you know, and you read things like that, which is, is really, really lovely. And of course, if you carry on long enough, you may find some of the children that attended your class yeah. and can come back as parents. I, I, I know. Oh, yeah, we'll have some grandparents there. So I've got um, I have got two ladies who uh, had second marriages. So they came with their younger children, but have got older children. And I, I imagine in the next couple of years we may see some of those. So, yes, it's quite scary. And we have had um, not of the little children, but we've had a tiny talk wedding as well, where two people in my class they didn't meet in my class, they were already together, but they got married and I went to that as well, which was lovely. And we've got one or two little children now who keep saying, sort of toddlers, you know, I'm going to marry you, I'm going to marry you. So <laughs> jokingly say I'm going to be like Stella Black and at some point I'm going to whip a hat out and I'm going to be at this wedding. So, yeah, no, it's lovely, really lovely. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so let's just talk about a couple more things. So what's your kind of growth plans in the next year or so? Are you kind of content where you are or are you having any more classes opening up? Well, at the moment, I am quite content. Uh, it fits in with my week 
quite well. I get, I won't say two days off, but I have two days where I'm not teaching. Um, but I get to spend a lovely day with my mom each week, which is wonderful. Um, mm. And then that other day I do head office work. So I say the information days, the training days. Um, but also it gives me my admin day and a, a day for me. Um, but as my children now are 16 and 11, uh, so one's just done GCSEs, one's going up to secondary school. I'm finding I can get a little bit more time to myself because I don't want to play with me after school anymore and all that kind of good stuff, which is taking me a while to adjust to because I would just be used to that for so long. Um, so I've started this year, I've done a marketing course with the lovely Chrissy Monaghan. Um, I've just started BSL Level 1. Uh, which is something I'm meant to do before now, uh, but just I don't know where the time went, to be honest with you. So so I'm investing in me. Um, and then I hopefully at some point we'll be able to get back into nurseries as well, which I did that for a number of years. Um, and so I'm, I'm just putting my feelers out and seeing what's there and what I can fit in. But I'm quite happy with the level of classes I teach uh, and the fullness of them. Because BSL is British Sign Language. That's right, yes. So that would mean that you could potentially work with deaf people? If I get enough training, but it takes a long time. So this course I'm doing, it's like a school year. So I've started now and I won't train. And if I can pass my exams till next July. So if I wanted to do that, it would be, you know, a good four or five years worth of training first. Um, wow. But I like it because what we teach is British Sign Language, sort of individual signs to help communication. The way I like to think of it is, you remember in the olden days before we had all this modern technology, if you were going on holiday to France, you go and buy yourself a thick guidebook wouldn't you and it'd have some words in and you wouldn't go and learn French but you'd learn train station hotel and that sort of thing so it's a similar principle so we're giving them some individual signs to communicate basic needs but we're not teaching BSL the language because it's you know it's belongs to the deaf community it's a very rich and wonderful and diverse language and um, but I do get people coming to class all the time saying Julie do you know the sign for this do you know the sign for that and then you know I've got a gentleman in class at the moment who works in a cafe and he's got a deaf family that come in and he keeps coming in every week going, Julie, how can I ask them? What do you, you know, what do you want? How, so I'm giving him the basics, but I'd like to be able to answer a little bit more as well. And, and I want to learn. But it, it's even from one week of doing it online on Zoom, it's fascinating to get into the head of how they work. Um, so we had last week on our call, we were given a sign name. Um, so a sign name is something that can only be given to you by a member of the deaf community. And the principle is it's something about you, um, a feature uh, or something about your uh, how you are as a person that you can sign it quickly. So that if you were in, say, a pub <laughs> and you wanted a drink, you didn't have to stand up and sign. Julie wants a drink. So my sign name is this, which means empathetic, which is really lovely. Um, but last week, uh, there's a lady on there who'd got rather a large chest in the nicest possible fashion. And the lady said to her, well, you could have this. And we all went, what, 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 what? And she said, she laughed at us. And her interpreter said to us, the deaf community work on literally what they can see. And it's very, very literal. So that isn't rude. It's, it's her. And she thought it was brilliant. She took it, you know, but so, so that's going to take a lot of getting used to the differences between what we as a hearing community think you know is acceptable what they think is acceptable so things that we do every day perhaps to them might be rude you know and so it's in it you know it's, it's, it's a lot of things to learn but i'm not really excited to go on that journey so for anyone listening to the podcast uh Julie um, was uh showing the signs of a large chest yes i was <laughs> <laughs> so but you, have to, you can see what you're you know how you're signing now so you can imagine all, on this call last week going <gasps> but uh, but no but it's absolutely fine so <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so we always finish up the podcast with um, a business tip, something that you can pass on to anyone listening. Um, it could be one or two things around um, your business wisdom. What do you think? What, what are you going to share? My business wisdom. Blimey. I think believe in yourself mm. and back yourself um, because I think if you, you know, in our example, I always say, you know, we have a, a lesson that we have to deliver but nobody knows what's on that lesson. So I do now because it's in my head and it's, you know, encrusted in my brain. But, you know, if you've sung something in the wrong order, you've said something in the wrong order, as long as it's not factually incorrect, nobody in that room is going to know. So just, you know, keep going, being you and back yourself and you can do this. Oh, that's a really nice ending for the podcast today. Oh, Julie, it's been lovely chatting with you. And you, Debbie. Why you've got the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you. Um, your enthusiasm is amazing for what you do. 
So we will make sure that the links to Julie's classes are in the show notes. And if you're watching on YouTube, they'll be put into the description. Mm -hmm. And we'll also add the link to Tiny Talk because it might be that you're nowhere near Birmingham, but you might be near a class in your area. So yeah. we'll share that as well. Thank you. So, thank you. It's lovely. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for joining us and um, good luck with your business. And you, um, I'm sure there will be more awards coming your way. Absolutely. And hopefully our paths will cross again soon. Thank you. Lovely, Debbie.